maybe you weren't 100% confident of the second step. What was going wrong with the second step? Well, first of all, I think I've noticed this on the other problems we've done. Because you might have maybe recently gone over alkenes, you're kind of thinking of everything like an alkene reaction. <laughs> um, but here, we weren't attacking the double bond. Um, so this was just a normal SN1 reaction. So um, remember that not everything is an alkene addition. Some things are just um, SN1, SN2, E1, or E2, or some of the other reactions that you've seen. The thing you should say to yourself here is, I'm replacing the bromine with an OH. Well, that should look like a substitution. This is a normal substitution where we replace the bromine with an OH. This is already a good leaving group. And what nucleophile would we use to bring in the OH? That was something else we had difficulty with. There were two candidates here. These were the two candidates that we could use yeah. to bring in the OH. That one adds, adds the but as you eventually noticed, this would actually bring in a methyl and an oxygen, mm -hmm. whereas what we want is a hydrogen and an oxygen. Because after this attacks, it's not going to lose the carbon, it's going to lose the proton to get rid of the charge. That's a common mistake. Often people. We have a bigger molecule at that point. Yeah. yeah, which is not what we're trying to get. Right. We're trying to get this. You have to focus on the goal. So this would be great it seems like almost if you were trying to produce this. Yeah. But this isn't what we were trying to get. And because, um, and here, since we're using poor nucleophiles, we should think of this as an SN1 reaction, which it we can do like you, in the secondary. In the first step of a synthesis, you're almost always adding a halogen in some form. Um, and then you right. mess with the halogen to get your final product. <laughs> Often, but not always. When are you adding a halogen? Well, when you're, at, when you're at trying to attack a carbon with no functional groups. Then you have to start with a radical halogenation. Here again, we were trying to add something to a carbon with no functional groups, and the only way we know how to do that is radical halogenation. Okay. But you'll see many other problems where you're attacking a carbon that already has a functional group, and then you don't need to start with the okay. radical halogenation. Okay, so again, the thought process here was, uh, it's pretty clear that the way to put in this bromine is radical halogenation, because we're attacking a carbon with no functional groups. That's NBS. And then this looks like a substitution, and then we just have to find the right nucleophile to do the substitution. It is a hard place to think, why would the bromine just be by itself? That's right. Well, because it leaves behind a secondary carbocation, or even more important, it leaves behind an allylic. So one thing to keep in mind is um, allylic carbons have extra reactivity the because they form sure. more substituted carbocation. Um, they have extra reactivity because they form stabilized radicals and carbocations because they're stabilized by resonance. So you pretty much always have an SN1 then if you've got that pi bond next to it? Uh, not necessarily. That, that's a uh, nice try. But if you had a good enough <laughs> nucleophile, if you have a really good nucleophile or base, it's still not going to wait for the leaving group to okay. leave. But in this case, we had a weak nucleophile that was going to wait around until the leaving group left. So it's not going to stabilize it enough to right. override a good nucleophile. Yeah. Okay. So I should say that table that I just pointed out to you, technically, um, it doesn't work for allylic carbons because... Um, well, if you treat it like tertiary, it does. Yeah, you can, kind of, you can treat that. That's a good point. Um, well, it still doesn't work because this could conceivably, so this can do an SN2 because it's primary, but it can also do an SN1. Normal primary carbons can't do SN1, but this can because <laughs> this is a primary that's stabilized by resonance. Okay. Normally, you can't form primary carbocations, but you can form an allylic primary carbocation. So the, the table doesn't quite work because the table says that you can't do an SN1 on a primary carbon, but you can do it on a primary allylic carbon. All right. I don't know, uh, but you're, uh, that maybe is, I don't know if your instructor would test that. Here, they were. T um, we didn't need to think about that too much. We had a secondary which could have done an SN1 even if it wasn't. Lab final, uh, lab final. All right. Guy tested it. Yeah. So this is actually not that abstruse an idea. It's not too unusual that this could come up. So that the key point here is, normally you can't form primary carbocations, yeah, but you can form allylic primary carbocations because they are less, um, because they are stabilized by resonance. But you can't just say that this is like a tertiary because it also has low steric hindrance. So it can do either SN2 or SN1 mm -hmm. with a, a, a good nucleophile won't wait for the leaving SN2. group to leave. It'll do SN2. A poor nucleophile will wait until the leaving group leaves and then attacks. Mm -hmm.